uh, we're about to get into the paranormal realm. It's been a long time since we've had one of our paranormal friends on, but uh, this was one of my very first guests ever. Back out, when your uh, show was just getting started. Back when, back when it was in its infancy and it was just me doing the show by myself, I had... Um, this may have been my first episode, actually. Yeah, I think you were on after after this segment, but I, I had uh, Miss Amy Jo from Fort Wayne... Fort Wayne. <laughs> that was retired. Let me try to do that whole <laughs> slick thing again. I had Miss Amy Jo from Fort Wayne, Indiana, paranormal investigator and uh, user of the ghost box was the first way we got to come to know that uh, piece of technology. But uh, I think she's on the line now. Amy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, Ooh, we hello. need to turn her up a little Hold bit. On, I'll turn you up. I can turn her up from here if you need me to. Just nice to s- nice to speak with you again. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I'm just going to turn you up again uh, real quick here. Uh, thanks for being on the show again. What? You mean to turn her up from here? No, no, no. Okay, I got it. You got it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, thanks for being on the show again. <clears throat> uh, it's, been a, it's been a long time. I uh, hope you're doing well and everything's uh, going well with your uh, investigations and, and uh, so on, so forth. Fort, oh, yeah. what's what state are you from again? Indiana. Indiana, Indiana. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. Sorry, I'm working <laughs> on the board. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Oh, uh, we're doing okay. We're confused. I don't know if you listened to our first hour, but we're talking about like a bunch of crazy. Uh, metaphysical fabric of reality type of stuff well about, it's actually uh, becoming scientific scientifically true now yeah right I mean, but yeah we're trying to we're trying to decode reality that's all yep that's my mission actually i'm just not good at talking good uh so <laughs> amy joe uh thanks again for coming on uh we wanted to catch up with you and uh see what you've been up to i guess uh, it's been about six months or so and thanks again for coming on when the show was terrible <laughs> uh, I, I, I appreciate that you sat around with me when I listened to some of the early interviews I did. I'm just like, oh god! I even even six even six months of doing this, I'm just fucking embarrassed of, yeah. the, of the first few things I did, you know. Um, but yeah, so we wanted to catch up with you and uh, see what you've had going on. You said you've been really busy. What have uh, what have you been up to? Oh, hosting! I've been hosting some investigations. I found. A new farm that I'm really excited about. It's not too far from Indianapolis. It's like an older type home. And um, I'm actually going back there again next Saturday. That's my um, newest, really, the place that I'm really, really excited about right now because it's somewhere new in the area. So. And so what's, uh, this is an old farm from the 1800s. It's pretty active. Yes, um, and they don't really know a lot of history about it, so that's kind of, it's kind of like a mystery we're trying to figure out. Now, we know that we got some very consistent ghost box readings last time we were there. Um, they and were answering all of our questions right away, and they were pretty graphic. I know we've and, explained. Uh, sexual. Can, can I, I, they I want, very, yeah. yeah, they were very sexual. So. Oh, really? At but this. I really can't say what's going on there because I didn't stay long enough. I really didn't. Um, what? We, everybody was freaked out about the house, and most people wanted to leave early. So that's why I'm going back so soon. I was just there for the first time two weeks ago. Yeah, so. you you really you really know how to tease. Uh, I I I've been out to this abandoned farm. No one knows the history. We're getting graphically sexual messages on the ghost box, but I can't say anything about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I can't. I just, uh, I really can't tell you very much because we didn't get to stay. You know, to me, I like to stay all night. I don't want to just go for a half a night. I like to do a full night. So you like to do it all night long. Early, that's pretty I much what you're like saying. It was so I'm ready to go back. Um, so so why, why weren't you able to stay? What? Why were you not able to stay the first time? Well, because, okay, we do have a rule. After Willow's week, my friend and I made a rule. We don't investigate with just two people. We made at least three for many reasons, but you told us, uh, was, we were left with only two of us. Yeah, you so, told us, you told us uh, this. We, we oh, won't investigate with fuck. just two of us, especially in a farmhouse that we're not familiar with. And honestly, when you drive by this house from the road, you can't even see the house. It's pitch black. It's the craziest thing. And plus, the house isn't even there. Yeah, you told us a story last um, time you were on about uh, Willow's Weep. And uh, I think that Yes, the story was you were there with a pretty decent sized team, and there was a giant thump from underneath the house. 
Is that right? Am I remembering yes, that right? Yes, we asked for a, um, a sign, you know, of of the Spirit's presence, and, well, it was the loudest thing. You could, it was almost like someone took a sledgehammer and pounded it on pure steel, and then it lifted us about a half inch off the ground. So, um, the one guy had a hurt back beforehand, but he actually really had a hurt back for about a couple weeks after that. I mean, it wasn't, a, like I said, half inch, you know, it wasn't a ton, but to lift seven people off the ground, half the people were like, something has to be underneath the house that lifted us. You know, they're, they're trying to trick people at this house. So my friend actually went underneath and crawled under the ground to prove that there was nothing under there, and it was his bones. There's a bo- There's bodies under there. A family plot. Now that's what but I was getting. Yeah, that's it, what I wanted to get to because it's a pretty crazy story. So they heard this huge bang. People thought it must have been set up. They looked for some kind of mechanism or machinery under there, and then later they ended up actually finding bodies buried under the under the house. That's the Willow's Weep House that we want to go to. But that's uh, that's the one with the uh, like the uh, what do you call it? Uh, fuck, I'm so stupid. The uh, uh, pe- the pentagram shaped room. The whatever. The, yeah. like, the oh, the house yeah, with the, the, the corners cut off. Out. Right, yeah, yeah. I told you that that was pretty, really one of the most active houses that I've ever investigated. That so. Yeah, that was very cool. Um, So since so, so so you're saying since that investigation, you've made a rule that you don't stay anywhere with, uh, what, less than uh, three or four people or something? No, no. I will stay with three. And just, I, not just alone, because I don't know it. I tagged... Um, Somebody and the person, Vinny, yeah, I tagged him in the, the EP that I got. Yeah, that's when me, I, yeah, yeah. You could actually hear the footsteps chasing me in the, in the house when I was there. And that was when it was just me and Chessie. We've never had anything like that happen to us. It was almost like they knew that it was just us. And so, the whole house, I mean, we were hearing veins, we were hearing scratching. We, you know, those footprints <clears> charged <throat> us. And then something actually came home with me that night. Let me see. Uh, let and me... it was waking me up for like months afterwards. It was yeah. waking me up every night. I was yeah. getting scratches on my faces from fucking, what's that place called? Oh, Mantino. Yeah, I got yeah. fucking, remember, you, we... I saw you the next day. I had fucking like yeah. five different spots. I had these scratches all over my fucking face. We had our own small experience with some weird uh, little after effects of a, of a trip we took at one point. But So this is Willow's Weep Out in Indiana. I'm going to pull up this video that uh Well, while you pull it up, let me in. just talk to you. So you don't go anywhere with anybody who can run faster than you pretty much. Just. Bring, bring, a, bring a slow mo and let him get the first. As long as I'm the first one out. Yeah, yeah, right. That's what they always say. You don't have to. You don't have to run faster than a vampire or a ghost. You got to run faster than your slowest friend. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's exactly why I didn't leave. Right after I heard those footsteps, I wanted to pull out of the driveway, but it's a very long driveway, and I knew I was going to hit the house because I was so scared. I mean, because I I had never been that scared in my life. I mean, that is still to this date the scariest day of my life and I knew that if I tried to pull out of that driveway I was going to run right into the house so I didn't I sat on the couch for a little longer and calmed down and that's when we started hearing banging in the kitchen like somebody opened the the cupboard and slammed it and uh, scratches on the wall and horrible things were they were calling like all kinds of names so, on the, so you're talking about Willow's names. Weep now right you're not you're not yeah. talking about this new farm you're going to um, and when are you going to no, go no no that was Willow's Weep that when, was Willow's Weep when are you going back to this farm I really don't know a lot about the farm like I said we only did like a half a night investigation that's where we're going back again this Saturday and you so. got you, you didn't get any any recordings or anything good you know that we yeah we got some good ghost black sets but but they're, recorded, going, no. they're going. They're going back to do a full investigation. Okay. Um, we but. do. We do have something. There was a, a guy from York Paranormal that was there, and I can get it for you guys if you want to post it for everybody to view later. He got some recordings of the ghost box sessions, and you guys, it's very graphic. Though I mean, it's very graphic. Oh, okay. What well, the, that's the good. spirits are saying to do what they. It's almost like they were abusing somebody. <clears throat> You've heard our show, yeah, right? Yeah, you listen to the show, right? Um. <laughs> it says that'll be, that'll be a lot like somebody somebody with a little speaker with our show playing. You know, it'll probably be very similar. I, I offended um, one sixth of the country in the last hour. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> let me play this. Let me play this video. Uh, I got I got the video you sent me. So we're gonna hear you you and your fellow investigator. I guess are standing still. Uh, and you're you're doing a little uh, ghost box session, right? Yeah, my my friend is actually on the floor, and she's putting newspaper into the the wood burner, and I'm standing right behind her. 
And that's and there's, when there's you no know, one. There's no one else. Everything happens. That's when this, this happens. So there's no one else in the house with you at this time. There's no. It's her and I. There is no one else in the house. So what you're gonna hear? I've listened to this a few times just to help the listeners along. You're gonna hear. So these two are standing still. There's 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 two ladies standing here uh, doing their investigation. They're standing still. No one else around. And you're gonna hear uh, some footsteps kind of rushing in. And uh, we'll go from there. Here we go. Night. Yes, I have a knife. Shoot that in your pocket. Yep. Oh my god! Did you hear that? <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Knife. Yes, I have a knife. Shoot that in your pocket. Yep. Oh my god! Yeah, you hear like three really heavy footsteps mm-hmm. coming. Was coming that right you up. screaming like a little girl? Even a little closely, <laughs> like if you put headphones on, you can even hear them start. Even a little bit before that, almost like they're a little lighter. But you can tell from listening that they start from clear across the room so and come charging right at me. And they stop because it's a wooden floor. And I could tell those footprints stop as soon as my feet hit, right that, where my feet were. So it was like they were charging me. You was, know what I mean? They were coming from clear across the room. Was that you or your partner screaming? That was me. I, I did. I, I'll admit it. You know, uh, I got scared. The crap out of me. scared. <laughs> I got really scared. Me because <laughs> uh, I knew that I heard those footsteps just charge at me, and there was nobody there. I could hear the them come, you know, from clear across the room and stop at me, but there was nobody in the space that was filling the. You know, I just that was like one hundred percent proof to me that we weren't alone. So I didn't, I didn't need ever since that day. I've never needed any more proof. I really just do it for the thrill and for I also you know I'm an empath and I love to communicate and I love to help spirits and I love to help people so sure but but I've never needed any more proof than that uh so. how often uh how often do you get really scared like that like I would imagine you know a lot of the times you're <laughs> you're kind of just doing your 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 thing and you're going around and you're and you get a little bit used to it how often do you actually get kind of uh thrown off by something and really and really scared I'll be honest with you more. I think it's because they, they it's almost like they play with me more. I see, I feel like, because I was just at Coast Town and I've met some new people. I had never investigated with them. I was the special guest at their, at their investigation. And I did. I screamed right away because I was looking at a little head that was peeking in the door. It was looking at me. It kept peeking out and then pulling back. So I was concentrating on that. And all of a sudden, I look to the right of me, and there is a full black figure that just, I mean, you could see the legs, you could see the arms, you could see the head. It was like seven foot tall. It appeared right on the right side of me. Black figures always scare the shit out of me, too. On this head, and then this black thing just appeared on the right side of me, and I screamed. So (laughs) it was like, they they caught me off guard, you know? I wasn't, and everybody's like, oh my God, she's a screamer. I'm like, you know, that really caught me off guard. I can't help it. I'm, you know, you're staring at one thing. And then the crazy thing about the head was that eventually it stopped. Like, it would peek out and come back and peek out and come back. And then it just, just and it was a little, I felt like it was staring at me. Because it stopped peeking. <laughs> it just gave me chills. So. And we were sitting in a pitch black room. There was only very little light that was coming through the bottom of the doorway. So. That was pretty neat, but it did. It's, I, I screamed. I got scared. When I get kind of guard, yeah, I get scared. And one thing is, when I have the headphones on, I actually use headphones with my ghost box, so it really blocks a lot of the static out. Well, when I have the headphones on, sometimes they'll scream, and I'll scream. Like, they'll say, I'll say, you know, are you here? And they'll say, yes, and I'll say, yes, and I'll always say it, just like they do, <laughs> however I hear it. Where if they say it soft, I say it soft. So sometimes I do scare people. I always try to warn them. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you exactly what I hear. And okay. a lot of times they'll want to put the headphones on too to verify and kind of see. We also have splitter, a splitter that we can use so two people can listen at once. So, but it really helps with all that static noise. That yeah, I would imagine. Box, so, and and when something screams right in your ear, uh, that's gotta yeah, be. That's how- because it really, if you think about it, you're in a pitch black room, you're walking around, you're doing a ghost box session, and any sudden noise is going to scare you because you're, you can't see. All you can do is hear. And if, the, if something else is heard, I'm not going to hear it because I have those headphones on. So sometimes I'll see other people's reaction. Like, I'll never forget the one time I was at Thornhaven Manor, and I was um, sitting with the door behind me with three other people at the table doing a session, and all of a sudden I look around, 
And all three of their faces was just like, oh, my gosh, their, their mouths had dropped open and they were looking behind me. Here I have these headphones on. I have no idea what they're looking at. And I was so scared to turn around. Like, I was like, what is behind me? And come to find out, the door had flamed behind me while I was doing a ghost back session. But I had no clue. Because I'm sitting there in my own world doing my session. <laughs> so that was pretty creepy then. The life of a paranormal investigator. And you do, you're, yeah. you're doing mostly uh, private residences and things like that, right? No, no, I don't oh, anymore. Not? Oh, okay. I have my, I, it all happened ever since I got, we helped this one lady out. She was trying to sell her house and she couldn't sell it. We went in and tried to help her. And um, let's just say the police showed up. They put the gun to our head and said, you know, get to the ground. And I'm like, wait a second. We're helping somebody. You know, we tried to tell the police what was going on. They wouldn't let us off our feet. They kept us on the ground for an hour and a half. And they didn't believe us because the homeowner had left. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm, I'm just, I'm not saying I want it all, period, but I'm being very picky about what private residents I go to now. Well, you know, the old, you that know. That lady had left us, and I've never had a gun pointed in my head before, unless you say I never want to ever again. So... <laughs> You know, uh, was such a jerk, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, this is just crazy." I'm not doing it, so I will. You know, I, I help people that that I know, and I also help people after I talk to them, and I have a list of questions that I ask them, and I feel like, okay, this is legit. This is a good situation for me to be in. This is, I will come help you, but I just sure. don't go help anybody like I used to. So, have you ever heard the uh, the old saying, "Police are always reasonable"? <laughs> you guys know that saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it yeah. was, this, this was a bad cop I'll admit it not all cops are bad but this one was a bad cop I don't know what his problem was but yeah. he he treated us like criminals he did background checks on us all while he had us on the floor and he still wouldn't even double check our business cards that were on the stove or he, call uh, the homeowner he probably didn't so believe basically in ghosts wanted, like he got off by treating us like no, this and is. I've never been. I mean, that was traumatic for me. So. I know what I know what it's happened like, I've to you. I've never been in trouble with the law. I've never, you know, and I just I it, that kind of changed my perspective on doing private residence. So I take it, you know, from a different angle now. Yeah, I don't blame you. You were yeah. probably investigating in one of those cities where everybody's like a Satanist, and like he didn't want you to uncover the secret of why there's so much spiritual activity because the whole town, yeah. like the mayor, like like <laughs> fucking right. sacrifices children and right. shit it's like, like that. It's like an X Files episode. <laughs> yeah, no, like thing, uh, yeah. the reaping. You ever seen that one? No, like that type of thing. Um, She's seen. There's them. a whole bunch of a whole bunch of bad stuff that goes on yeah, in that town, but I didn't. I don't know. I kind of just said, "Well, if you need my help, lady, I'm coming. I don't care if it's a three hour drive, and you're not going to be there, and nobody's in the house, and three people hate you in the neighborhood. I'm still going to go." Because <laughs> 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 that had to do with it. The three people seen us inside. They knew what we were doing, but they're against you know paranormal investigators. They don't want the attention on the on the town or the neighborhood, so they called the cops on us, and they knew who we were, but they tried to say we were intruders. So it was a big old, huge mess. I said I just don't want to deal with that anymore. <laughs> so. Yeah, so I, I was going to ask you, how much, uh, how much, like he was mentioning, you know, as a joke, but how much uh, Satan worship have you come across in your line of work? In little no, towns and not, shit. Not very much at all, honestly. No. 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 I haven't come across too many. Which would mean Saturn worship. Saturn, Saturn. yeah. But I, I want to get back to the... Can, we, can I talk about the ghost box a little bit with you, if that's okay? Sure. Oh, yeah. Um. So this thing scans multiple frequencies simultaneously and f- yeah. and, and then picks up, like, a, a... Makes audible language out of a very uh, a various frequencies and makes it linear so you can hear it, right? Yes. I think it's a. I think that's probably a, a real thing if you're hearing shit off that. I mean, because we've been doing the. the we've been talking about multiple dimensions and shit, and um, that would make sense that if I was a ghost, I'd be like, I'm gonna tune to to real life frequency and talk good. You wouldn't be able to. <laughs> you how would you be able to make your mind do that? Because you're a ghost now. You have a fucking radio antenna in your throat. You would have to be across a few spectrum of frequencies at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know totally. what I'm saying. No, I, I so you die, yeah, and then, yeah, then yeah. now you can fucking just talk to people. No, you'd probably have to struggle to get make make your way through it. You'd have to be uh, through a various range of frequency if you're on a different plane. Sure, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. And that's why, like, like I I put it before on the show. Like, if you're trying to find an intersection in dimensions, 
then you'd have to rapidly scan a wide range of your dimension to try to right. try to catch that little that that little blip that might come through. Word up. So yeah, uh, I've seen a ton of uh, ghost box sessions, or or there's a lot of other similar technology on on YouTube and stuff, and a lot of them have this sound where it's like very echoey and hard to pick out the words. But I've noticed yours is very kind of concise when when you when you get a word it really sounds like a word uh do you right. do you know why that is with with the particular uh technology you use versus like the other ones on youtube most people have this kind of like you know uh hang on i've actually got something that sort of sounds like it they'll ha- they'll have a thing like you know hey uh what uh how did you die <laughs> You know, you'll hear, <laughs> right. you'll, you'll, well, hear, you'll hear something like that. He clearly That's said bed it, sheets. It really right. depends on the place and what's going on. It, 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 this is what I've experienced. If there is a spirit that wants me to know something, I will hear it, plain as day. And there won't be any question about what it says. You'll hear it, clear as day. But a lot of times, we're picking up on other stuff, and we're just hearing radio stations. That does happen sometimes, even with my equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, but there, when, when there is a, a spirit there that wants to talk to you and wants to communicate, you're going to get constant questions. I mean, constant questions answered, and that's happened to me many, 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 many times. And there's been ways that I can't take it. Like I said to you before, you know, I will hold up a card, and I will ask, you know, I won't look at it. I'll just take a random card, hold it up, and, you know, ask the spirit to tell me what it is, and I'll call it out. I won't even know what it is. And, I'll, you know, people will randomly pick a card, and it's me, or go in the corner and hide it, and I will tell you what it is, and there's only one way I can do that. You can't really because hustle a spirit. Was actually That's... speaking to me. So, nope. I mean, there's ways that I try to make sure, you know, that I end, and every time, if that spirit wants to talk to me, it will find a way. So, oh. and I'll be able to hear it. But trust me, there are plenty of times I go to locations and those spirits don't want to talk for whatever reason, and it sounds like mumbo jumbo, and I can't understand any of it. And I'll say, this ghost box session is not good. It's not working. It doesn't every time. So just depends. And I, I think that spirits are attracted to me now because I've been doing this so much and so long and I'm very empathetic with them and I really do, I, I really feel others' emotions and sometimes I feel like I pick up on the spirit's emotions and I can relate to them and I'm very, you know, empathetic to them. So I get a lot of activity. It's like wherever I go, I get activity. So... How much do these spirit when they know boxes cost? Like that, they want to communicate I need to know this. Anymore. And they're some assholes, you know, that they don't want to communicate with. So. Right, yeah. How, much, how much are these? How much are these spirit boxes? Mine was 120 Wow. If I had one of these, I, I wouldn't not ever have it on ever i'd, I'd keep I'd it with me in my pocket right, i'd drive yeah. around and wait for somebody there's some ghost well, to start swearing you know, at me you're gonna, and then i'd, I'd get, get out of my car of, you know you're gonna get a lot of yeah wait, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of just radio signals in most places you go to though, is that you what know? happens you catch yeah, radio I would, signals i would and think shit? so especially if you're driving around in your car but uh i was gonna i was gonna ask i mean clearly they, we must be in in the very infancy of this technology you know i mean it's uh Obviously, the field of uh, paranormal research sort of got some legs in the late 60s and 70s and started to become more of a serious thing and stuff. And, uh, you know, I think only now are we starting to see any real uh, any real backing for, like, uh, for pushing out any products for this, this stuff. And once the demand goes up, they're going to start developing this stuff more, you know, and it's going to be a more legitimate kind of uh, area of the market. Did you check out that thing that I asked you about, the ghost arc? I did. That was really neat. I know that it wasn't on sale yet, but it was going to start going on sale this summer. It was really neat. Um, I, I would try it out, definitely. I mean, it's really not even that expensive. It was only $199. Yeah. I would I would love to try it out. It looked And looked that's neat. the one that, that gives you all the readings. It gives you the ghost box, the EVP. It's like it gives the you peak, the temperature it's, it's reading. Like the Swiss it gives Army you, knife. Yeah, it's yeah. the Swiss Army knife of, of ghost hunting. It's the that's, thing that he got. I know we should write their ad I wonder copy. how it would work together, you know. I, that that really makes me wonder how that would all work together. Because I've had it happen before where I'll get a ghost box. Um, like, I'll get the ghost box to say something, and then I'll listen to my EVP back. And I have got the same exact thing on my EVP right around the same time I got something on my ghost box. That's happened quite a few times. Um, yeah, and that's – I've heard other people say that too, and that's always – Obviously, that's that's a great way of uh, corroborating the validity of what you're doing with the ghost box uh, entirely. 
You know, I wanted to get to... Um, it would be nice if they had one that did all that and told you your horoscope and was like a calculator. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's coming soon. It's coming soon. Uh, we, should, we should invent it. Uh, ghost box extraordinaire plus calculator. The uh, let's get to let's get to a couple of the recent places you've been to, and maybe you could uh, maybe you could dazzle us with a a ghost story or two. But you told me you've been to uh, let's see, what do we have? The Rose Hotel. That was a pretty good one, right? So like the Stephen oh, yeah. King thing. I, I love that place, but um, yeah, so it's one of my favorite places. I, I go there regularly. So oh, do you? So uh. Andrea, you pulled up some history on there, right? Well, I want to make sure I'm looking at the right place. Is it related to the Rose uh, um, Rose Island Amusement Park? It's Rhodes. Um, R-O-A-D-S. Rhodes Hotel. Oh, Rhodes. Oh, all right. Rhodes. I did not Rhodes. find anything about that place. God damn it. All right. Let's skip. <laughs> let's skip. Let's, yeah. let's skip if to the... If you go to my event page, I actually have an event there coming up in Is April, it closed so. down or you got to pay to the stay Rhodes there or Hotel. what? What? So tell us about it. It's a, is it an, is it abandoned or what? Um, no, it's been renovated, but it, you know there's there's lots of history on the place. There, it, it used to be um, a morgue. They used to keep um, you know bodies and coffins there, and they used to kind of display them on the by the window. But come to find out, there's some controversy on that whole thing. It really is. A, it's really detailed, but it's. There's a dog that died there. When they first moved in, the dog was actually dead in the house. Hmm. And I guess they'd left it to starve to death. So it, it really makes it itself known, the dog does. And also, it used to be a brothel. So we have come in contact with quite, quite a few of... Prostitute of ghost? Of spirits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. And I, I slept <laughs> there five times. I sleep in a different bed usually each time I go because there's all different kinds of haunted rooms that you can stay in. And um, oh, this is the one I've ever been able to <laughs> sleep. So, because usually the spirits will wake me up every time I try to close my eyes, they wake me up. There's this little girl. Uh, we sit. We sat in this one room, um, and we didn't have any noise. We just sat there for ten minutes in quiet. And the whole time we had, we listened back to our EVPs, and we had this little girl rolling, running around, just laughing, just like giggling and laughing all around us. But we never heard it with our own ears while we were sitting in the room. So that was really neat. That's the place where I told, I don't know if I actually told you, if I've talked to you since then, but I, I put one girl in the corner with my he- with my headphones on, with the, go- the ghost box, and um, I said to her, I said, you know, just face the wall, don't look this way, so she didn't look at us, we had a candle going so we could see that she couldn't see us, and I asked the spirits to tell her how many fingers I had up, and I had a thumb up, just one thumb, and she immediately says, thumb. She didn't say, I, she didn't say nothing else. But I had one thumb up. <laughs> I said, how many fingers do I have up? And she said, thumb. So we all thought that was pretty neat. And then I said, okay, how many fingers do I have up now? And I put up two thumbs. And she, in the corner, said, double. <laughs> we thought that was pretty neat. I already gave her the finger you know, right after that. Us, so. <laughs> that is cool. Uh, that is yeah. crazy. So that, that, that place is really neat. Now, one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me with the ghost box, though, so, which just happened recently, and I can't explain it. It was at the Monroe House. Um, I asked, where are you? Where, where are your bodies at? <clears throat> and they said, under the stairs. And I was like, okay, what are you doing under the stairs? And I got, it sounded like 10 different voices around 10. I, I can't tell you exactly. They all said, we're dead at the same time. Well, I have never are. had that many voices come across at the same time say the exact same thing. And it was like they weren't even a little off. It was like they all said, one, two, three, we're dead. I mean, I've never, never, ever experienced anything like that. That's funny. So that like, really- they found they found your question annoying. Like, what are you doing under there? Like, we're fucking dead under here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what think? What do you want? Like, yeah. Yeah. Here that or it was exactly. like one guy with ten heads. Yeah. Leave us alone. <laughs> yeah. One guy with ten heads. It could have been, been that, too. Been one guy with ten could've heads. Could have one guy with ten heads. You never know. Uh, Dead, motherfucker. I, got so to, that, I, I keep trying to pull up creepy music, and it's, like, really disappointing. Here's the creepy music I found. This is just YouTube creepy music. Yeah. This is what you yeah, get. Yeah, this is okay. It's okay. Yeah. Um, we might use but it. But that thing about under the stairs in the Monroe house, I was doing a little reading about it, and that's, like, one thing that everybody always says is that it's, like, all any mediums or anyone who goes there to communicate with people always result with 
something under the stairs. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there's a bunch of stories about disembodied voices, and uh, there's a story about a father who allegedly murdered his two children there. Um, But, yeah, so that under the stairs thing is really common. Well, I got a question then. So you're a paranormal investigator. You go to these places. Why not bring a hammer, pry up one of the stairs, check you know, check out what's going on, and uh, or go? Did you go under the stairs? Well, she, they, she, she had something like that happen with Willow's Weep. I kind of. What I'm saying like, is, if they say, "Hey, we're under the stairs," why don't you say, "Hey, you know, I'm gonna I'll go and look." Well, they might be there. Start, you can't just start prying up boards. Yeah, well, if you're, if you're if you're quiet. I mean, yeah. All right, let's talk about the Monroe House. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, that's what that, we were just talking about. Yeah, that, that was the oh, place that, that I, I thought we were still on, the um, ghost sorry. box when it said we're dead all at the same time. Oh. I couldn't wait to tell you about that. So I, I, thought, I, thought that <laughs> I thought no, that no, was that's the Monroe house. I thought that was the roads. I was trying to find music when, when you guys transitioned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so, it was, uh, it was so a really I quick transition. That up again because I, just, I was just really excited to tell you about that. Because hearing that, I was like, oh my God, did I really just hear that? I've never heard. How do they do that? How do they say, well, we're going to answer this all together? Do they just, I mean, Without, you know, without any, I mean, just, it, it just blew my mind. It blew my mind. So, um, Andrea, can you give us like a, a quick history of the Monroe house? What is this place? Yeah, I've got, uh, well, she just said that it's common that every, everybody who goes there, hears the under the stairs. Right. Thing. But what's, what's the deal with it? Uh, let's see. The history is a bit hidden. However, um, in the late 1800s to about the 1930s, there is uh, some information about it. It was owned by a Belgium Belgian immigrant. Uh, the father was a barkeeper, <laughs> and, and the house used to be a bar. Uh, they had three or four children who stayed in the home as adults and worked at a large glass factory as glass workers in the 30s. Okay. All right. uh, <laughs> as opposed to all the small glass factories around there. Um, but that's... I mean, besides the paranormal history of people experiencing things, that's really the only thing that's known about the place. So they don't know a ton about it, huh? No, um, but there are a lot of stories about uh, disembodied arguments and fights. Um, and let's see. So, Amy, did you have did you have more uh, weird stuff happen at the Monroe House? Yes. Um, one of the creepy things was you guys are going to try to have to visualize here. I am in the dining room, and it's me and two other people. And one of the guy that was with us was a little further away from us, so he couldn't see a shadow that we had seen. So me and my friend had seen the shadow, and it kept kind of coming out and going back, and we're like, oh, what's going on with that? But then at one point, it actually kind of stepped out, and we were like, oh, that is a person. Like, we knew that was a person. We were not thinking it was a spirit. We really did think that someone was outside the window trying to play with us. So the guy that was with us went outside, and we just had to follow him. And we went and looked, and there's nobody there. Well, you know, he could have ran, but, I mean, literally, when you step outside and you walk around, you're right there. And we looked everywhere, and there's nobody. So we didn't see how he could have ran that fast or where he would have went. Um, we went back in the house, and the shadow was still there, and we realized it was not coming from the outside. It was coming from the inside. <laughs> we just completely lost it. I mean, you have no idea. <laughs> Three of us in this house, and we knew that there was someone in this house. So we, we decided to walk walk closer, and it completely disappeared. Yeah. Just, like, it just went away. <laughs> but we, we we really thought it was coming from outside. The way that it looked from how we were sitting, but that, I mean, that was creepy to me. And then there was this part, and this is... This last investigation at the Monroe House, I am telling you, from the time we got there, I could sit here and tell you a whole hour just on our, on our experiences that night. But one of the other things that happened was we left the keys on the table inside to one of, uh, to my friend's car. And we were standing outside talking about how crazy it's been. And all of a sudden, her alarm starts going off. Well, the alarm, the key to her alarm was on the table in the house. There was nobody by the t- by the car. There's no way that it could have went off. It can so no. That can, knew I think it could be explained. It. Somebody had pushed the alarm. I mean, that was you have no idea. There was just so many things that happened that night. Her lights kept coming on inside the car. While we would be investigating, we'd look out the window and her lights would be on, and we had no idea how her lights came on. I mean, damn, <laughs> just damn, like damn, damn, damn. you have no idea. This this night was one of the craziest investigations I've ever had. So yeah, I was. And that was all at the Monroe House? Great. 
Yeah, that's huh? all. The, that was all the Monroe House. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, the yeah that sounds house. crazy. Yeah. And, and it's just like I'm telling you, but you know, you weren't there with me. I'm trying to word it the best I can, but it was it was great. That's okay. This is this is crazier than Willow's Weep. You're saying though. Well, and when I say okay, Willow's Weep was different. Like we we had hours of nothing, the and then we had the biggest thing we could ever hear, and we got lifted off the ground. Nothing can ever compare to that. I mean, that was one of my first investigations over five years ago. So, I mean, nothing can ever compare to that. And that was, it was like, you know, do that first and then nothing seems like anything. But honestly, that Monroe House, that night, it, it just kept getting me. Just when I thought, okay, we're done with activity for the night, something else happened. And then I thought, okay, we have to be done. Something else happened. And it was just, it just kept on and, and kept on and kept on all night long until we left. From when we walked in, because we did a walkthrough as soon as we got there. And um, we walked by the radio, and as soon as we walked into the other room, the radio came on. Doors shut on us. Um, it was just, it was all night long. We would get horrible things, because it used to be kind of like a brothel, too, from what they say. Like, That's what, yeah. They used to, there used to be some stuff like that going on in this house. And there is this one male there that always talks over the ghost box, and he has the same voice. And he's very dirty and nasty. And he will call, I mean, he's like, he says awful things to women. <laughs> give us a, give so, us a, give us a taste. What is he, what kind of stuff is he talking about? Uh, <laughs> I can't even say it. I can't say it Come on radio. On. There's only one, that if there's anywhere this, you this can say it. This is the only radio yeah, show you can is, say it on. This is the place to say it. We say, we've what? said, whatever this guy said, we, we, we have said worse at some point during, yeah. during the fourth hour when things oh my are, God. you know, when if things you, really get... When if you tell really, us, yeah. I'll say something worse than you immediately after that <laughs> to make you feel better, and I promise I'll you. Give you. I'll give you guys a clue, okay? Okay. okay. He said, F my D. <laughs> Suck my dick? What is that? The ghost, <laughs> the ghost told her to suck his dick. The ghost said that? But if you think, if if it was a Wait, brothel. Wait, did you say D, D is in dog? <laughs> she said no. dick is in dick. No. Dick, D is in dick. D is in dick. Yeah. That means okay. that this guy that went to times. this guy went to this. Of to course, women, it, only if there's women in the room, he'll usually. Be, and then if you say no, I'm not going to. He'll stop talking. And then if you say okay, <laughs> he'll talk. Wait, which place? Which, <laughs> the brothel place. So I would imagine there'd be some weird pervert Wait, just you, running are, around. Hold on, are you talking about uh, the Willow's Weep or the Monroe House? The Monroe. Monroe House. Monroe, okay, all right. Yeah, sorry. there used to be a so, brothel and shit, right, so right. of course there's a guy, because yeah, yeah. that's why there's a lot of dead perverts in our houses, because you were allowed to kill them there. Because you, yeah. it's, it's like robbing a drug dealer. You're not robbing a, a business, you're robbing a drug dealer. You can't tell on you. Right. You can't go to you go to a brothel, you kill somebody, they can't be like, hey, somebody killed somebody in our brothel. I mean, that was, yeah, there be, had to be lots of murders in those fucking places. <clears throat> Unless it was back when it was legal, you know. Was I mean, it legal for how long? Yeah, at some point it was. Yeah, yeah they yeah. must. Have, they probably. They made, I don't think it was hey, legal. Andrew, I just think that everybody liked good, it, and it was. It was okay to have. That's a good conversation. Find out when was prostitution made illegal in like Illinois and Indiana. But just for the fuck of it, we'll do that later. But anyways, <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's uh. Well, no, I want to know what what else did he say? Anything else sick, dirty, or something? It sounds. Like that? It sounds like you run into a lot of perverted. Uh, perverted uh ghosts and and the same thing out at that farm you were starting to tell us about <laughs> in the beginning the guys are just man tormented souls though here's what they're going to be they're probably going to be tormented because of some kind of violence uh psychological yeah. or, or sexual abuse so you're going to have the same themes coming up quite a bit i would think but also think about this you go into a house and you're fucking with ghosts and you have the spirit box you're asking them questions and stuff right like what's your name how did you die and if it's like a ghost trapped in that house for like fucking like 10 years it'd be like the fuck out of here suck my dick you know, you know? yeah, like, yeah. You're, just, you're gonna shoot right. the shit you wanna you know you know you know what That's, do you want to what do you want to know how did I'm, you die i mean i mean i mean fucking eternal hell trapped between dimensions <laughs> suck my dick. give me a blowjob here or what, what the fuck <laughs> fucking horrible i'm, I'm a horror I'm, I'm a suffering spirit trapped yeah no we're just you know we're just we're just trying to commiserate with the spirits there on that but uh no it's perspective i know you know what but i mean is I get, that what you ask them though I get like what you're how saying, did yeah, you die like yeah, that's yeah. the first thing you ask me you know fucking shoot the shit for a little bit so you, what is your tactic when you go in and you're talking to spirits do you do you just tend to go straight for the meat of the of what you want to know or do you try to get comfortable somehow and do you find like it's even possible to form a rapport at times or, or what's your strategy there what? What was that last part? To, is it possible to have a rapport? You know, is it possible to like 
to to sort of get a good relationship going and and get some casual conversation going before you hit the spirit with some hard hitting questions, or do you just go and and <laughs> and uh, and just ask what you want to know right off? Did the your bat? father rape you? What happened to you here? No, no, no. no. <laughs> See, I don't, and I I won't usually. I know a lot of people who use the history to do most that's of the talking, what I, and they that's will only meant. ask according to history. So Sarah died in the house. So I'm going to say, Sarah, do you want to talk? Sarah, do you want to talk? And that's all they'll do is they'll use only the names of people that, and I don't do that because, for one, I know that there's not only spirits of those people. There's other spirits, too. There may be spirits from a house two miles down the road or that way or that way or across so, the street. So, I mean, occasionally okay, I will okay, say, okay, okay. so are you here and say it specifically? But I'm not going to just ask, you know, Sarah, Sarah, John, John, the people that died. Because I know people that will only ask and refer to people that is in the history. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Not me. I will do look. <clears throat> I, in fact, I do sessions. I will say, okay, and I actually like sing a song, and I'll bring all the the children into the room, and then I'll ask the children to leave, and I get a lot of a lot of experiences that way when I when that's I call cool. them out into groups. Like, and then I'll have the men come into the room, and I yeah, I that's how I kind of do it. And like I said, occasionally I'll throw out a name, but it's not what I base my investigation on. It's not like I'll ask that 15 times, you know, John, are you here? What are you doing, John? You know, a couple of times I will. And if I don't get, if I get a response, I'll keep on talking to, you know, John. But if not, I'm not going to just keep saying John all night. So. Makes sense to me. Yeah. No, that sounds yeah, cool. But I know I mean, some people that do do that. Like, so they, they think it, if that John and Sarah is not answering, I had a bad night, you know. And I'm like, well, maybe it's because you were only trying to talk to John and Sarah. <laughs> you know, that's funny. Right. So. Yeah, I have seen people do that. And once again, if there's once again if there's like actual like tortured, trapped souls in places, you can't just walk in there. Every fucking every, somebody comes by here every three times a week, and they start yelling my fucking name. They think and they run out screaming. Like the fuck? Yeah, you gotta have. This place and, sucks. You gotta you gotta consider yourself to have some sort of unique. Uh, attribute that they might want to communicate with i guess well, what right? she was saying you know, also so. is she doesn't want to fucking go in there and use the internet story to start taunting them and yell their name and would well, that make sense the same thing that people so what do you do you walk in and say any ghost around here <laughs> you know yeah what kind of what do you actually what do so you say what do you, you start asking if the room the room goes quiet uh the owners leave everything's set and and what is what is the first thing you say kind of in an in an empty room you know because i've i've gone out and try to do some little amateur stuff by myself. And I swear to God, I've been on stages since I was a kid. The stage fright of sounding like a douche in an empty room by yourself <laughs> is is hard to get over. I'll sit there and I don't and I just I feel like I feel like such an idiot going like, so uh, anybody here or whatever you know what I mean? Like what do you what do you say when you when when everything goes quiet? You're by yourself. You're gonna talk to the ghost. What do you exa- What exactly do you start with? Exactly. Calling all the children, that's what I say, and then I call them up to the room, <laughs> and then I usually creep everybody out because I kind of say creepy, but really, it does work. I mean, like, I'll have a ball, and maybe it'll move, or maybe, you know, I will get interact. So you're like a ghost I, that's wrangler. How, like, that works for me, and that's how I usually start out. I like to do the group, and then I kind of, I just get a feeling. When you go to each room, you can feel different things, and you just go with it. Go and maybe you hear something on the ghost box, and that leads you to another room. Sometimes, you know, they don't want you in this room; they want you to go in a different room. So, um, I do use the ghost box quite a bit on my investigations. I do because wow. if, if I'm getting a lot of action, like if I'm getting a lot of spirits talking to me consistently in the same voice, and I'm actually feeling like I'm having a good session, I will have it on quite a bit. Calling so. all call, calling all children may have been the creepiest thing you could have said to that. Yeah, no kidding. That, 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 <laughs> <laughs> calling all children. I told you, whenever she rings a bell. Never with me, they're like, okay, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, do you have to? Just go in there with a dinner bell, ring it. <clears throat> calling all children. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it sounds like when you play it back I'll do so. it, hold on, here we go I got the whole thing, here we go Here's what it's like Is it coming? What? Right. There you go. There we go You got it Calling all children <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. 
that's kind of what I... Yeah, creepy. Exactly. Sound like a ghost hunting child predator. Okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, it gets responses, okay? It gets responses. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you have to notify people when you move around places now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which yeah. is actually that, what you have to do. <laughs> that uh, that officially that officially uh, <laughs> registered me for the uh, for the afterlife child. Yeah. No. No. no look like, what you're yeah. dealing with. You go around looking for ghosts and shit. Plus, you have to like go to the town hall and like let them know you're going to be in an abandoned house later on that day. <laughs> like, <laughs> Andrea. Um. Yes. Let's. Uh, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Amy, uh, Amy sent us some uh, some stuff she's got coming up. Amy, we're gonna do your plugs all professional. Like, check this out. Ready, Andrea? What does uh, Amy Joe, a paranormal investigator out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, have coming up for people to check out? Let's see. Coming up April fourth, she's got an investigation at the Poestown Elementary School. Um, I'll post a link to that on our Facebook, as well as September, the annual Willows Weep Meet and Greet which is going to be a gathering of... By the way, let's announce here officially the Sunday evening overdose crew will be on hand at oh, the yeah. September Willows Weep meet and greet. September if you wanna, 19th. Uh, Yay! Yeah, well, we will be there with you for that. So what <laughs> What else? Yay! Yeah, I'm going to be, I'm gonna then, be uh, really ignorant to you face-to-face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to then, you'll uh, have to see if he's got some real balls finally. <laughs> no, there's gonna be children there are probably gonna be nice. Following the meet and greet will be an investigation <laughs> at Willow's Weep. <laughs> so that'll also be on September nineteenth, which we will also be at. Children. <laughs> <laughs> Anything awesome. else? Uh that's it. I have also posted to uh, everybody, everybody, check out our Facebook page. We've got all of Amy, uh, Joe's uh, uh, events, uh, pages, everything. Check her out. Like her page. Be friends with her. Keep up with her. She's Aren't we still supposed to go on an investigation with her? Yes, we're working that out in behind the scenes. Oh. We're working that out. I got to put the crew together. Nobody can agree on a I'll, date. I'll we're, do it. I'm not scared oh, of shit. I know shit. you're fine. You don't have a job. I have we need, scratches <laughs> it's on my all, It's all the other people I'm, we got to coordinate with. Yeah, right. <laughs> um... So Amy, we love talking to you. I uh, I hope we can uh, we can call you up again when we've got some questions about the paranormal field, or you've got another uh, cool investigation to tell us about. I hope uh, we'll stay in touch, and we'll I definitely see you at some of the conventions coming up. Yeah, and we can definitely go to do a. We'll, 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 I definitely want to do a paranormal investigation, we're doing, and, and I'll bring yeah. a slow friend. We're I getting, can bring a slow yeah. friend. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be out of there in no time. If it makes everybody a little safer, of course it does. Yeah, and well, we're, except yeah. him. We're, no, we're, we are we are putting a thing together behind the scenes. We, me and Amy talked about it earlier. We're gonna figure it out. We're gonna go out to Willow's Weep. We're gonna record an investigation. We're gonna get some of this evidence. We're gonna make a little YouTube documentary. It's gonna be cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're yeah. gonna do that whole thing. So, Amy, thank you very much for uh, for coming on again. We really appreciate it. And uh, here's. Uh, Here's hoping that uh, we'll talk to you many more times over the years if we keep doing the show. Okay, thank you so right. much. You guys have a good night. When is that right. event again? Thank you. When is that event? Which one? The, the, the fucking Elizabeth? thing that we're going to go to. September 19th. September 19th. September 19th? Yes, September 19th. It's a Saturday. <laughs> Amy Joe, Sunday evening overdose. And actually, I'm sure there'll be a few of our other uh, former guests will probably be there too. So. You think so? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll, yeah. they'll be there. They'll be out there. Becky will probably be there. Where's she from? Imps, I I am. Where is that in Indiana that too? For. No. Anyways, Amy's <laughs> got to go. It's getting late out there, and she's she's an hour ahead of us out there in the east. Oh no shit! Zone. So yeah. it's like Man. what, like fucking one in the morning over yeah. there? Yeah. So, uh, Amy, thank you very much again. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Oh, she's awesome, dude. There she goes. Yeah, that was nice. Uh, yeah, we love we love talking to Amy. She's a uh, I didn't know she's a great guest. We invite all our guests to swear. Why didn't you want to swear? Uh, some people don't like it, you know. But why not? Because it's like a publicly.